Japan's former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has been assassinated. He was 67 years old and was the longest serving Prime Minister of Japan. Abe was fatally shot at a campaign rally earlier today. A man opened fire from behind with an allegedly homemade firearm as Abe addressed a rally in Japan's Nara city. It is a barbarian act amid election campaigns which are the foundation of democracy and is absolutely unforgivable. I condemn with the strictest words. The doctors at the Nara Medical University Hospital say that Abe lost a large amount of blood. They tried blood transfusion after a hemorrhage but couldn't save his life. Officials say the former Prime Minister showed no vital signs when he was airlifted to hospital. Our hospital made efforts to revive him, but unfortunately he passed away at 5.03 p.m. By the time he got to us, there were two bullet wounds in his neck. He was showing no signs of life, presumably due to the damage to his major blood vessels and heart. We performed a blood transfusion and also tried to stop the bleeding, but unfortunately, he didn't make it. The suspect, a 40-year-old gunman, was arrested at the scene of the attack. He is reported to be a former member of Japan's Maritime Self-Defense Force. And for more, we're joined by Thisanka Sirapala from Tokyo, a journalist for the Diplomatic Diplomat Asia Pacific News Magazine. Excuse me, uh, Thisanka. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, can you talk to me first about uh, Abe and the mark that he left on the country's foreign and economic policies during his time in office? Yes, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was in power for some three terms. He is Japan's longest serving prime minister. And he introduced uh, a policy after his name, Nabonomics, which, were, which has continued to this day. His successors have continued the policies and really uh, emphasized infrastructure spending, government spending, uh, cash handouts, pumping money into infrastructure spending, low, ultra low interest rates and structural reforms. Um, one of the most interesting policies he championed was womenomics. And he envisioned women making up, uh, adding some 2 million women into the labor force because as uh, some of you may be aware, Japan, um, Japan's corporate system is very rigid and women tend to leave office um, after marriage. So he saw women as one of the tools to bridge the labor shortage and as well as um, produce increasing GDP. And do you think Arbonomics is viewed uh, widely as a success or does it have its critics? Well, Abenomics deal did fall short of its expectations. Um, he left abruptly last uh, in the midst of the global pandemic in 2020. And some of his policies that he introduced during the global coronavirus on the onset, during the onset, was very controversial. So I think the way he left, people have um, the last policies that he will be known for maybe some of the Abeno mask uh, handouts, which were free uh, masks to all residents during the pandemic. But I think he did have, um, he did low, uh, unemployment drop to its lowest during his term. And um, also some 2 million women did join the labor force due to his policies, but they did uh, this deflationary target, increasing inflation to 2%. Um, that did not work out during his term. Thisanka, can I ask you about his uh, revisionist history um, policy, the hardline stance sometimes people uh, call it that he took in that regard. Some uh, say that that means that he was a right-wing nationalist leader. Is that a fair ca ca characterization? I think that is relatively fair. He comes from a politically prominent family. His grandfather was a former prime minister. His 
um, brother is a politician. He was born into politics and um, he has often visited um, a really controversial shrine called Yasukuni Shrine, which is um, a, a cemetery for the war dead. And Japan's uh, imperialistic war history is very controversial. Um, he also was in favor of altering Japan's Article 9, the Constitution, um, in favor of uh, Japan having more counterattack capabilities, and that is seen as um, a nationalistic agenda. And Tasanka, can I ask you, how will the state, but also the people of Japan, mourn Shinzo Abe in the coming days after this uh, shocking tragedy? I think Japan at the moment is in a state of shock. Uh, gun crime is extremely low. Um, I think last year there were only three incidences of gun crime. Um, and I think, you know, there's not information about his funeral. I don't know um, how Japan will move forward from this in particular because on Sunday there will be the uh, upper house elections. So um, it is it is very shocking and it's unclear how the death will affect um, as the polls, which are uh, which Japanese residents will head to this weekend. Of course, thank you. Thesanka Sirapala, thank you very much for your time from the Diplomat Asia Pacific News Magazine. Thanks for your time.